Welcome back to Gun Tote Minnesota, and today I want to show you a blade sent out to the channel by Demco Knives. This is their Cub. It's in 20 CV. It's got the shark's foot and the shark lock. There's a lot to like about this blade. It has become an EDC preference for me, and it's in my pocket constantly, especially today when I'm here at the range. I want to show you how I used it and why the shark lock and the shark's foot won me over, especially in 20 CV. This blade has a lot going for it, and so I'm going to take a little bit of time and tell you about why this is better than a lot of the EDCs on the market. All right, for me personally now, these finger grooves, I tend not to opt for finger grooves in knives, but these are going to line up for almost anybody considering the size of the handle and the knife. It's just the way that the proportions are going to work, and I even can choke up and get my finger up here to get closer to that blade edge. That doesn't bother me. I don't see that as unsafe in most applications, and I'm not stabbing into things very often. Not to mention this has that shark's foot. With that shark's foot, I can bear down against something and get really good power. Typically, I'm doing it like this when I'm slicing through something. But I can get it in a, a couple different holds. I can get it in a pinch hold. I can choke up on it. I can be back here a little bit. If I was trying to get distance with something, I could do this. But this right here is still very, very comfortable. And a lot of times I end up holding it like this when I'm working with it uh, relatively hard if I'm slightly prying with it. Otherwise, this right here is probably how I hold it half the time. But it comes out of my pocket like 50 times a day. And a lot of times the way that I hold it is exactly how I open it. Like this, open the box, cut the cardboard and like that, right back into the pocket. Very convenient blade, very convenient handle, and I don't think it's overly slim considering I want it to be slim for an EDC blade like this. Texture uh, of those handles is sufficient for what I'm going to do with it. I'm not using it as an exclusively defensive blade. I don't need, you know, crazy texture or grip on there. In fact, I like the way it has um, just kind of this really elegant smoothness to it, and the corners of those handles are rounded. This is probably one of the more well-executed handles that isn't micarta that I've used. Very, very nice and smooth. Nothing sharp or uncomfortable about that, actually. Radius contoured really well. well. It's been a while since I've been somewhere where the rain had been so much and then it had frozen over. And, you know, the first two millimeters of all the wood is permeated, it's soaked, and then it froze. And so I got to get uh, some birch bark warm up for a fire for filming today. I do a couple of things and I actually really have to hunt for wood. It's not usually like this, especially with uh, birch bark being as plentiful as it is. Usually I can just grab some birch bark from somewhere and pretty much throw it on the ground and it just burst into flames. But right now, yeah, it's really wet. So I am going to use the cub here. This is going to come with me and I'm just going to grab some birch bark off of a standing dead tree somewhere and that will be probably more dry than everything else hopefully and we'll use that to get a, a fire started it's not a birch it's not a bushcraft knife but it's going to have to do the task today here looks like a decent spot to grab some some old hard thick birch bark <sighs> Okay, let's actually get the knife in frame here, huh? All right, everything's just too wet all together. So I got to try to get some dry wood out of this. It's starting to snow out as well. I'm just getting to a dry portion right there. Yeah, it's somewhat dry in there. Uh, 
it's all frozen together. Kind of a miserable condition. There it is. I can just peel back some. I can get to the layers that are still oily and uh, very fire conducive. Okay, there we go. That's the inner the inner strands that I need to get to. Everything else is just got water frozen right into it, embedded with water. Here's a test. Will it work with my mittens on? These are not gloves, these are mittens, and they're, you know, they're not really conducive to opening a blade. Now, I don't think I can do this one-handed with a mitten on. I'd be really surprised if I can, because I'm gonna get in the way of the locking mechanism more than likely. Yeah, but you know what I can do is two-handed open, easy enough, and probably almost close it that way. So, works with mittens, that's a win for sure. I don't have to take my mittens off and if that sounds goofy to you when it gets to be actual winter out and it's 20 or 30 below and you're working on something outside you do not want to take these off and you don't want to hold on to something cold and all knife handles all materials are going to be cold in the winter time so it's an advantage to me to be able to use the knife make sure that it functions well I can pull it out of that pocket um, decently well with my mittens on I can use it and real estate wise, I'm still getting a lot of the blade that's accessible to me here. And it's got that, that really mild but efficient jimping. It does work. I can put my thumb and I can bear into, and I feel confident with it in my hand with the mittens on. So it's probably not functional for many people in the country, but those of us in the north who actually use tools and actually use our hands and are not going to be taking mittens off in 20 below temperatures, yeah, it works really well for that. Now, speaking of pocket carry and uh, in general pocket clips, let's take a look at this pocket clip. So as you can tell, that is a deep carry pocket clip and it is, I mean, it's excellent. It's been excellent. It is executed the way that I think most people like a deep carry pocket clip. There will be some people out there who prefer uh, something blacked out and not stainless. I actually like this a lot. Blacked out is cool, but this design is very, very simple. It has been robust. I have not found it to be difficult to get onto my pants. I'll show you that in a second. And there's enough material there to fit on a pair of work jeans, not like these, you know, uh, I don't know, like basketball shorts or something like that, although this would be sufficient. It would grip onto the basketball shorts fine, but on an actual pair of work pants, this has enough space. Sometimes that's been an issue and it gets too tight on certain like old clips from Cold Steel in particular that I'm thinking of, um, some spider codes that I've used, they're just a little too tight. They're a little obnoxious with an actual pair of work pants. But this has a sufficient gap, but it also doesn't seem to stick out so far. It's not rainbowing out to the point where this has very little tension. Um, actually, it's done really well. And as, as you can see there, if I can just get it clear, when I pull on it just enough to slip up and over, I like the way that this flattens out right there so it doesn't tend to grab on things it doesn't get pulled up out of my pants but it also uh, is easy enough to slip over into a pocket quickly so i've just never had this be a hang-up issue at all it is deep carry uh, in my opinion that's deep carry and it's not terribly flashy i don't think it sticks out too far it's not a huge knife it's not a huge clip to begin with A little bit of a cold hand test. Hands are freezing now. And my dexterity isn't great, but this is still easy to use safely. Fits into that pocket well. And it's only going here on a pocket that goes down to here. So plenty of space at the very bottom. And it's ending right here. So this is only taking up a, a very small amount of space in that pocket. It does fit actually in my fifth pocket or the lighter pocket up here. If I wanted to have it more concealed, it would be equally accessible to me right there. Again, these are 
I don't know, what are they, Wranglers, something like that. They're like a work pant. Now, inevitably, there's going to be somebody who says, that Demco blade is cool, nice looking blade, but it's no better than my Open L. So I have here an Open L6. I've had this for a long time, and I do use it. stays in my jacket pretty often, actually, as a backup, but that's exactly what it is, a backup. And I'm going to tell you, Anytime I do a fixed blade review, um, it's not long before in the comments somebody says about that fixed blade, well, it's nothing that my Mora knife can't do, nothing that my Mora companion can't do. And if I do a folding knife review, it doesn't matter how good it is, how unique it is, the materials it's made out of, somebody inevitably says, well, it's no different than my Open L. Okay, I'm going to start by saying that's ridiculous and ignorant. Uh, just on the on start they're not the same blade they don't function the same way they're not made of the same materials and even their specs i mean they're pretty different but there might be people out there and i'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt but they use knives in such a simple way maybe they just open mail they uh, mostly have it right around their pocket stays in their vehicle glove compartment or something and it's uh you know they they do really simple tasks with knives and they're never ever really carrying a blade for a serious use or for work or anything like that. So maybe for you, if you're in that camp, this uh, rusty, by the way, open L carbon is enough. And you don't care that the blade is kind of slow and difficult to open and close. And it is a little wider in the pocket. It doesn't have a pocket clip. It rusts. Um, it's not very strong. And the blade steel is, you know, Easily sharpened, but easily dulled. So maybe you don't care about that. Okay, I'll put that back in my pocket for a second, though. I think that's ridiculous to compare these two blades and say the Open L is just as good. This is definitely a unique and different blade, and it's more functional. It is better, and I want to talk about that, why this blade is worth that money. So for starters, this blade is one-handed operational. And I think that deserves a lot of credit. And it's very functional, one-handed. It's extremely easy for me to use, one-handed, open and closed, with just the slightest amount of uh, wrist action or with my fingers. It's easily manipulated, and I can keep my fingers out of the way while I'm closing it. It's not hard to do in either direction. And uh, if I really needed to, I could easily use the thumb deployment method as well. I'm going to say that as far as opening and closing goes, this is my favorite design out of all knives. I like this style. I've generally been a fan of lockbacks, like the Triad Lock has been, you know, a long-standing favorite. I mentioned it in the previous video I did for a 3V version of the 20.5. I like the Triad Lock a lot. It is really, really strong. It's probably stronger than this. Maybe. I'm not an expert on that, but it's probably stronger than this. And it has some advantages, you know, there's no rise here, although this doesn't give me too much of an issue. Um, but at the end of the day, this function right here is the best EDC style lockup for me. It's been better than my Spider Co's. It's been better than uh, the, even the other cold steels and other Demco produced knives. I just think the Shark Lock is easier to use and more functional for EDC tasks in general. Um, deployment is a 10 out of 10 and it's almost every single time unless i really do something stupid it's just not hard to actuate which makes it very functional and easy to use in all hands that i've seen so far and i wear an xl size glove this cub is not too small for me all right looking at that blade that is 20 cv and anybody who says that their regular old open l carbon steel blade is just as efficient as 20 cv is out of their minds 20CV has really, really impressed me. This has been probably my favorite steel I've ever used and incredibly durable. When I use this knife for weeks at a time and don't have to reprofile it at all and not resharpening it, I'm just honing it, either touching a ceramic, just barely touching it, mostly on leather, a couple swipes back and forth, and I have had this thing back to razor sharp again and I've used it hard. I'm cutting through wood, I'm cutting through rubber, I'm cutting through zip ties every single day. And so far, in my use, no chips, nothing in that edge that is making it inefficient or catching even on paper. So no, your carbon steel Open L is not at the same level as this Demco 
uh, 80 um, uh, cub rather in 20 CV. Looking at the profile and thickness of these blades here, obviously the Openel is not a big knife. It's not a huge amount of space in the pocket, but it's not even close to as carryable or packable in the width department as the cub here. The blade is thinner and it's very, very slicey for food and things like that. But look at this overall package. And the benefit is, I know that the Openel is smaller in this portion, but that's actually the portion I want to fill my hand. And so the benefit, again, goes to the Demco blade here. There's more hand filling going on there. And this is not taking up much real estate in my pocket because it's so thin in the first place. So again, it's going to be superior to most folding knives I've ever used. One thing I can give the Openel is it's classic, and that's cool. It's got a certain aesthetic, and I like that. But I do tend to get a lot of junk in here. And when it's food and I'm working with something and I've got that uh, non-pass-through design, that has to get cleaned out from time to time if I'm going to use this with food again, not to mention it is going to rust. Obviously, it did here, even with minimal use. The 20CV blade here has not rusted, even with... You know, basically being mistreated and not being taken care of very well. Plus it has a path pass through design and I haven't found this to get too dirty inside. It's very easy. If I do clean it out, it's going to be mostly up here and back here towards the mechanism. But that itself has enough room to breathe where I'm just not getting that filled up with lint. Like with my red dots, I'm not sure if you can see in there or not, but it does get pretty filthy. And so I usually have lint building up in, in red dots and in sometimes knife mechanisms. This one has enough room to breathe where I just haven't had much of an issue with that. And it's easy to clean out if I do drop it in the dirt or it gets sand in there. Just not terribly concerned about that. So again, I would definitely give the win to the Demco blade. How about ergonomics? Okay, so people say, well, some knives are just much more comfortable. And the trade-off here is going to be that, yeah, this is round. And that rounded wood handle does feel, you know, relatively comfortable. A more effective um, comparison would be with the Openel 7 or 8, perhaps, probably the 7. But I'm willing to trade ergonomics when we're talking about an EDC. Because portability and the capability to be accessible quickly, fast, and put it back fast, that's a huge benefit. And I'm mostly looking at this as an EDC blade. I'm not looking at this in the way that I look at an Openel which is more of just a for fun blade for me. So I'm done insulting the Open L now. It's a great knife. I carry one because I like them. But I just want to mention that, you know, there's always inevitably a comment to somebody saying that this blade isn't any better than some of the cheap blades out there. And that's just patently false. It's a foolish thing to say. This blade is superior. And I'm going to say in almost every single possible fathomable way. Okay, next up, I'm going to do a few cut tests. On just some random objects. Here's a little uh, cord track rollover. And these are pretty dense. And so I'm gonna try to cut into that. And actually it slices in pretty good. That's not too bad. Let's go ahead and run it this way. Yeah, that's a, a pretty tough piece of rubber if you've ever used one of those before. Yeah, pretty close. Let's do one more cut. I'm going to try to do a slice through it. There it is. That uh, point actually really makes a lot of sense for utility work. And it probably does a little more than other kinds of grinds do or uh, tips, points for that matter. Here's an old bottle of spackling compound. Let's see how it cuts through. Cuts through that, no problem. Got this old bottle. Here we go. So I'm going on about a month and a half of regular use, which does include a lot of things like what I'm doing right now. Breaking down materials and cutting into dense plastics, sometimes cutting against wires. Let's see, a little bit of electric stuff that I had to do. And after all that time, that 20 CV, I'm telling you, 20 CV is a pretty excellent performer. 
yeah, it's still good. I don't feel any rolls in the edge. Here's a really hard piece of plastic. There we go. A um, little bit, I'm gonna test different parts of the blade here. Okay. Let's wrap this up a few times. And Okay, and one more, let's do this. Okay, I'll try to get through all these pieces here. There it is, pretty decent cut, nice slice through. Um, this is some magnet tape. Which I'm going to be using in a little bit, but I'll go ahead and cut the slice I need right now. Yeah, I guess cutting a magnet, it's decently, let's see about there, decently difficult. Pop through that, no problem. I'll try another part of the blade here and see if I can get that belly to touch down. Not quite. I think this right here is preventing me from totally biting in, but the way I would rectify that would be to, uh, let's see, it's right there. Just cut like this and rock it back and forth a little bit. Still makes a decent cut. Definitely putting some abuse on the edge, but still it feels very, very sharp to me. Okay, and a little bit of wood. Let's just get a good bite into this. Not an edge that I would call, you know, woodworking um, design. It's it's not something for that task. But I'm not afraid to push CV uh, 20 CV against wood. I think it does great in folding knives. I probably wouldn't use it in a bushcraft style blade for certain reasons, but it's an excellent, excellent steel. And this one is an example of excellent steel. I just think it does the best in a folding knife EDC type blade like this. Obviously, I haven't touched it up in a very long time, and it didn't have any trouble against that piece of wood right there. All right, and some cardboard tests. So this is double thick cardboard, if you can see that there. And it runs through it really, really well. Not, not at all concerned about durability with this edge slips through that double thick. You know what, this is actually, now that I look at it, it's a little more than double thick. It's like two and a half layers. Let's go this way. So I'm actually going with the grain now and not a challenge for this blade at all. EDC tasks wise, this is, I mean, it's a, a really, Really hard to beat combo, I think. Those handle scales are excellent. Blade is still looking good. Obviously 20CV is built for extended periods of hard use. All right, cutting through an orange. Just give a little slice test here. Obviously that tip drags down and makes sure that I make all, all the way through whatever I'm cutting. So it's actually a pretty good knife for the kitchen. Let's go this way. All the way through. Let's try to get a thin slice out of this. 
definitely capable of doing pretty decent kitchen work and I enjoy using it. Definitely capable in the kitchen for the things that I do on a daily basis, EDC type tasks. I've got an old piece of a t-shirt here, which I'm going to cut up for gun rigs. And I need to slice through, cut into pieces. And this slices through really nice. I mean, that, that was a crazy cut. The fact that it cut through that much fabric was just... Not a lot of effort. I think it's that design of the the way that the belly works, the way that the tip works with that. I can make a lot of contact with that. Whereas with a clip point, maybe just slightly less because I'm only getting the tip with a clip point. And this one I can kind of put belly down and get just a little more contact surface perhaps. I guess that's that's one theory. Okay, Let's see if I can slice through this. It's a very short blade to do this much fabric, but all the way through. It's a pretty effective cut. And let's go like this. Roll it up and see if I can slice through this pretty good. That's mostly way th most of the way through. You know, this blade is just crazy sharp and it's so deceiving. The edge on this is incredibly deceiving. That's actually a fair amount of fabric, guys, and it was not it was not hard for me to push through. I feel like I would need a fixed blade typically to do that much damage through that much fabric rolled up. And this little cub, I mean, it cuts through it like nothing. The 20CV has been fantastic, absolutely fantastic. I'm really impressed with the stropping capability of this 20CV, the edge angle. I do not have to put much pressure down, which I thought I would. I thought I would have to put more pressure down. But stropping this, as long as I match the angle, and I'm going darn near exact what the angle is, as long as I get that angle pretty complementary on both sides, and I'm going to clean off the edge there, I only have to run through it, it seems like, a few times every week. And I use my blades a lot, but I, it seems like I have to run through it just a few times, like that, right there, is enough. And then it's like back to shaving sharp. And I'm telling you, it's deceiving how sharp, yeah, right now, looking at it, it doesn't look that thin. But the edge must just be so uniform, and that 20CV takes a strop really well. This is probably my current favorite steel. I'm, I'm very surprised. I haven't tried Magna Cut yet, and I believe that Demco does have stuff in Magna Cut. I'll have to try that out next. But this is so impressive. 20CV is a, an excellent folding knife blade steel. I think it's very complimentary in this design and incredibly capable for such a small package. The corrosion resistance on both of these blades, the 20.5 and 3V, as well as the Cub in 20CV, Corrosion resistance has been superb. I have no rust on either of them. And as you can tell with a white background, they get wet, they get snow on them. I think because of the slightly bigger size and weight of the 20.5, it seems like it flips open and closed even smoother. And that's a very choice way of saying it. I don't think this one's unsmooth. I think they both open ridiculously well. But deployment wise, you know, on the 20.5 model that I reviewed, it does have a thumb stud. If that's a big deal for you, I suppose that would be something to consider is that this has a thumb stud, but it's a winner. This model, obviously most of the time when I take it out of my pocket, my hand's already in that position like this right here. So I'm just not worrying about the thumb stud, but it's nice. It's nice to have these two blades. Let's see. These two blades right here have different sizes to them. They have slightly different thicknesses and tolerances there but I like both of them a whole lot, and I think they're phenomenal EDC blades. The uh, thing that would probably change my mind about which one I'm going to carry is going to come down to probably tip preference, because both of them are phenomenal steels. Yeah, it's going to come down to the tips. Do I need to P3 
pierce something in a particular way, well then the clip point does have some advantages. And it has plenty of belly all along the way. But I found that this was really good in the kitchen. This was an excellent slicer. It does have uh, the ability to pierce pretty well on the cub. But I just think that piercing is going to go to the clip point in my opinion. This is not a slouch though. And most of the time, and most of the things I'm doing, I'm actually really good with this one. And because of that superior steel, it's just been with me a lot lately. But it doesn't make this one inadequate. And that was a crappy flick on my part, but it's still deployed. I don't know if you noticed that. Even when I really, like, give a half-butted attempt to open this thing, it's just very flippable. And that's probably due to um, the weight overall. A little bit heavier, a little bit bigger than the Cub. But I, oh, there's a bad one. But I like both of these, sincerely. So who is this blade best for? I'm gonna say somebody who's actually looking for a true EDC and maybe you're sick of the Walmart quality, the, those just poor quality brands and uh, products and knife steels and handles and fitment design, the construction of some of those poor quality blades, even, even from some reputable ma manufacturers lately, I've just been disappointed at the boring renditions that they're coming out with. This is not boring. This is not weak, and this is not cheaply made. This is a high quality blade. Uh, the 20 CV for me is great, but the cool thing about these designs and so many of the Andrew Demko's designs is you don't have to get it in, you know, a quote unquote super steel. You can get them in more basic steels and still get the design. So if you need a beater knife and you don't want it to be in a particularly higher end steel, you could get a design just like this, make it look like this, but then a more workable steel for your application. Or if you're like me and you just don't want to have to be touching up your blade all the time, even though you use it a lot, then you can go with the 20 CV blade or better. He has better steels too, um, depending on your application and your, your usage of the term better. For me, this is perfect. This is right where I want it to be. I think this blade is executed so well. It's hard for me sometimes to imagine like how the customs could be better than this. But I guess, you know, especially if you just want to be a supporter of Andrew Demko, you kind of want one of both. You want the custom and you want the production line uh, blade. I suppose somebody who hasn't tried the shark foot yet um, or the shark lock, if you haven't tried either of those, if you've just had the cold steels, the triad locks, um, maybe the uh, fixed blades, the armature series, if you haven't tried one of these yet, you've got to try a shark lock. And I really highly encourage you to try the shark's foot. I was surprised it won me over. I like the clip point. Um, that I have. I, I've got a, a clip point with a shark uh, lock on it and it really won me over. I thought very highly of it. The 20.5 is an excellent steel or an excellent blade rather, but this right here is just so EDC friendly for the things that I do. Fits with every outfit and every application and I have no concerns about lock strength or application. Um, I still do carry my 20.5 quite a bit because I like that too and I love 3V but this blade is hard to beat. So I'm gonna say somebody who's looking for something unique, high quality, you're not looking to skimp on you know, the production of it and you want it to be just a little different than others with some serious strength. I think the Shark Lock is gonna do it. Andrew Demko blades in general, I can just recommend the whole lot of them. I haven't seen anything they've come out with yet that I thought was crap, none of it. I think it's all well done, executed well. Um, just the fit and finish and the comfort of a, a knife like this is really surprising. I didn't expect it. I thought it would be a little more uncomfortable in hand. I didn't think it would be quite as utility friendly, and I was just straight up wrong. It is a really, really good blade. So I can recommend it for everybody. I just think this blade is so much more functional than some of the other very popular manufactured knives out there. And I think it's stronger. I think it's better. And I think it's cheaper to some degree 
than those as well. So I highly recommend it. I'm a big fan. I plan to do more reviews on these. Thank you to Demco for sending this out. And I'm going to keep beating this thing up and using it. And hopefully I'll do an update in about a year.